Hi guys, it's me, Trudy Lee. How's everyone doing? I'm doing pretty well, although we're having crazy weather here. I guess everybody's having a lot of rain. It's here now. It's been raining all day long. This morning when I got up uh, early, early, it was so hot outside. We were having like a hot rain. It was like in the 70s and raining. And I just went outside and let my dogs out. Um, now it's a few hours later, uh, later in the morning. It's now it's cold. It's it all of a sudden got cold. It's like 58 degrees. I mean, this crazy, crazy weather we're having just crazy. So everything changes. You never know what to put on. You got to go outside and put your toe out the door before you walk out around here just to be sure you're dressed properly, you know. <laughs> and it's funny because since we're in South Texas, when you go out, you'll see some people are wearing shorts and some people have coats on and, you know, all hats and everything. And you're, if you just took a video, you would not even know what temperature it is. You'd be like, what temperature is it here? There's some people, yesterday there was people, we were at a show. I had a work weekend. We were doing a show. And let me tell you, people were very scantily dressed. I mean, people go out in public with short shorts and hardly nothing on. And uh, of course, lots of spandex. <laughs> Y'all know how I feel about that, right? About a... Uh, wearing a really tight pants. <laughs> I try not to wear really tight pants. They're uncomfortable anyway. And uh, leggings. I know I've heard all about it from you guys. Uh, I could wear leggings, but there's no way I would wear leggings with a shirt that, you know, unless it was super long and went over my thighs, there's no way I'd be going out showing myself in leggings. No way. But everybody, every person that I saw at the show, every other woman was wearing leggings. Everybody was. And they wear them with short shirts and they don't care what size they are. I'm like, I can't do it, y'all. I just can't do it. Uh, that's just me. Anyway, you, you never know what kind of weather it's going to be around here. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. I shouldn't get off on the legging thing. I, I've got a mental thing about it, y'all. It's just mental, I know. But I don't want everybody looking at every little dimple in my ass. Sorry. <laughs> That's only for my husband to see. I'm proud of them, and that's only for him. <laughs> Took me this many years to get them. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at Bloomberg today because somebody sent me an email, and they asked me to look at them. Like I said, I had a work weekend, so I've been working uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at the show. But I'm taking a look at him. When I connect with his energy, uh this is what spirit shows me and tells me. It's so funny. He's short on stature, but uh, they're showing me he's a tall drink of water. So he's got a lot to offer even, you know, and he's full of surprises. He, there's, I see stacks, stacks and stacks of like bowls with lids. He's full of surprises. You're going to look and see when you start looking at him, you're going to be surprised. Going to be surprised. That's what they're telling me. And he has... This is so funny. He has the magic touch for Trump. And you know how a spirit shows me this? You remember that E.T., E.T. phone home? Remember him with his finger was lighted, had a little light on his finger? There, That's what they're showing me, Bloomberg. He's got a little light on his finger. He's got the magic touch for Trump. I think he knows how to get under his skin. <laughs> he knows exactly what to do. I think he goes way back with Trump. So that's what spirit is showing me. And, uh, you know, also they're showing me that, you know, he's very altruistic, um, this Bloomberg, with what he wants to achieve. He wants to bring back um, or restore, like, they're showing me like elegance. Elegance? I don't know if that's the right word. Elegance, respect, admiration, you know, our standing in the world. He wants to restore our standing, you know, that we'll be respected. And they're, I just, I'm just seeing elegant, you know, that we'll be very well thought of, you know, um, and admired by all other countries because we've lost that right now. So really he wants to bring back all those things. So he's very altruistic. So that's good. He's got a good heart and he, I think he's in it for the right reasons. That's what spirit is showing me, you know, that he's in it. I mean, why, he doesn't need to do this. 
He's rich. He's a billionaire. He has everything. Why, why does he need to do this? Why? Because he loves the country. He loves our country. And he sees Donald Trump is just totally screwing it up. So, okay. That's what I get when I connect with Bloomberg, you guys. Now I'm going to read the cards. They're already, they're already dealt out. Or I've already got them all lined up and ready to go. The bottom of the deck that I just dealt from is the flavor of the reading. And it's seven of pentacles. So uh, his hard work, you know, and campaigning and spending loads of money. Yeah, they're paying off. They're paying off. More people are paying attention to him. It's, it is paying off. Sorry, my dogs are barking. Any little movement and they start going crazy. Let me settle them down about that just they could see a cat running outside and that would just drives them insane okay the first card that i have for bloomberg is page of pentacles you know uh, he's going to get some good news uh, his support is increasing energy is really good um, there's you know lots of people are responding to him so that's really good news for him Crossing over that card is Two of Swords. You know, he's made a decision to take a different approach to become the Democratic nominee. You know, he's not going down the same, you know, pathway that all the other, nom you know, Democratic frontrunners are, are doing. Like, you know, he's not even on the stage, basically. So he's taken a different path. Uh, and this is a challenge for him getting others to really see him and to see his perspective, getting his message out there and, you know, letting them know that he is the one that can defeat Trump. That, you know, he, it's a challenge for him because he's doing it in a different way. So it's going to be challenging. All right. Overlooking that situation is the hermit. His path to the White House is fueled by, you know, deep emotional desire to take back our country. It's very, very personal to him. Um, oh. he's very, I just feel like he's very real. He's very patriotic and very real. Okay. That's why he's taken this path. He just felt like he had no choice, that he had to do this. You know, that, that he was just inspired and he had to do it. Uh, foundation is the Empress. You know, he really wants this nation to heal. He wants us to, you know, all come back together. That's, that's the nurturing mother, you know. He really wants to heal us and bring us all back together. We're so divided. And that was really, really his desire and hit what he wants to do to bring us all back together as one. In the past position for him is the Ace of Cups. You know, when he was governor of New York, he he really complete he completed a lot of good deeds. He did a lot of great things for uh, New York. Uh, as for the mistakes that he made, you know, that's the only way that we learn. We learn by our mistakes and we move past it, okay? So we have to let go of those mistakes and embrace the future. So that's that's the guidance here. Let's not focus on what he didn't do. Let's focus on what he did do. I think that's the message. Future is the emperor. You know, he's very qualified for the job. He knows what he's doing. Um, he knows he knows Donald Trump personally. So he can push all his buttons, just like I saw that, you know, E.T.'s finger. <laughs> and basically, he'll be one step ahead of Trump all the time. You know, he can anticipate Trump's behavior because he really knows him. And he will lead us in the right direction to defeat Trump. So he's the right guy for the job. It looks good for him. You know, it looks he looks like a really good candidate. That's what it looks like. Will he be able to become the Democratic nominee? I'm not sure. Let's keep going. 
This is in his state of mind position. This is the fool. You know, he's really willing to risk it all to defeat Trump. He's risking his money, his reputation and everything to defeat him. He is so focused on the good that he can do as the president that he's really not worried about, you know, he's not worried that he can't defeat Trump. He just, um, he's very confident. You know, that's, that's what, that's what this fool is all signifying. You know, it's kind of naive about things. So he just is very confident and he doesn't feel like there's any chance that he couldn't defeat Trump. He feels like it's in the bag. If he could be the nominee, he can defeat Trump. No problem. That's that's how well, that's what I'm getting from him. OK, so he feels really good about um, being able to defeat Trump. So that's that's good because we need somebody that's very confident and that can stand up to Trump. So we'll see. Uh, the next card I pull for him is the seven of wands. And, you know, this is that. Um, this is stand your ground card, we call it. He will stand up for this nation. He'll defend our beliefs, our principles, and honor um, those that have sacrificed so much. That's really, you know, that's what he wants to do. And that's what he is doing. He's standing up for all of our beliefs and for the good of this country. So I like that so much. All right. Uh, this is uh, hopes and fears position. This is the judgment. It's hopes and fears. So, you know, the people will stand up and judge him. Um, he'll be he'll be judged by his honesty and his past behavior, you know. And we'll have to we'll have to see how that turns out, because, uh, you know, when you this this card is a card of balance. Things balance out. So what you've done in the past will catch up with you in the future. So there's a lot of balance here. So he'll be judged by all the things he's done in the past and, you know, of, of what he's doing right now. So it all will come together. So if, you know, if he's done good deeds and he's, you know, out there saying the things that everybody wants to hear and thinks that are great, then he'll be judged very well, very good. But if he's, you know, not done good things in the past, if he's got a lot of issues, which I don't know a lot about Bloomberg, so I can't really say for me, I can't say, but if he's got, you know, a lot of, uh, if he's got a lot of shit in his past, excuse my language, uh, then he'll be judged for that too. Okay. So that's what this is. This is the hopes and fears, but judgment card's really perfect here. Okay, so he'll be judged on his uh, honesty, his behavior, that all his actions. But the outcome card is the Ace of Wands, and this is a good outcome. I feel like we're going to see more support for Bloomberg. This is an opportunity to defeat Trump, you know, and we need, that's what we need. We need somebody that can defeat him. Uh, but this isn't an easy path for him. You know, when we see this card, we know this is an opportunity but this isn't easy. It's uh, it, it takes a lot of nurturing. When we see the wand that has the growth on it, we know that it's going to take nurturing time, lots of passion and energy. So it's not going to be something that's simple. It's not just going to be like, hey, uh, I know I'm the one that can defeat him, and we elect him as our nominee, and it's a, in the bag. Uh, it's not a sure thing, but it's a very positive step in the right direction to defeat Trump. OK, that's how I, I'm reading this. So it looks really good. Can't say 100 percent for sure that he'll be the nominee, but it looks he looks really, really good as a potential Democratic nominee. So we'll see how it goes. I can read on him again when it gets, you know, a little little uh, further into the year and see how it's going. But it, it's going to get better for him. He's going to get. Uh, more time, more people are going to, you know, gather around and uh, start listening to him. You know, I don't know what is it about Biden that is he's so down in the polls right now. He's just slipping and slipping. And as he slips down in the polls, I when I watch him speak, I feel his energy is so low. You know what I mean? He's just like, yeah, New Hampshire. Well, you know, I might not. I may be defeated, you know, I might not be the front runner, I might not do well. 
it's like he's thrown in the towel already, you know, instead of giving us something positive to say, he's just like, oh, well, you know, it doesn't matter. And it, it matters, you know, we want him to be out there. He just, it, he feels like such low energy. So I don't know what's going on with him. I mean, it's, it's grueling. It's just grueling being on the campaign trail. So I can imagine at his age, it, you know, it's difficult. Uh, even though there's some others that look, like it's not so uh, daunting. I watched uh, a little bit of uh, Elizabeth Warren on Saturday morning. She was there. She looks so tired. I have never seen her look so tired in my whole life. She looked, she looked just exhausted. I know it must be exhausting for all of them, but she looked, especially for the ones that are older, it's just so hard on their body, you know? Just think, going from one place to the other, to the other, to the other, probably getting a few hours of sleep and getting up real early and going all to those morning shows and getting on the morning shows before your day's all filled up with campaigning again. Uh, gosh, I don't even know how they do it. I don't have that much energy. I don't know how anybody could be expected to have that much energy. This process that we have is crazy. It's just crazy. And then the, there's uh, Mayor Pete. He looks good because he's young. He can do it, you know. He's still in his 30s. My goodness, he can he can pull it off, you know. He could probably sleep for three or four hours and be good to go. Uh, I mean, even though you're older and you may not sleep as much, you just don't have as much energy to, you know, you need a nappy in the middle of the day. I do anyway. At four o'clock, it's my nappy hour. I'm like, oh my gosh, I need a nap. It's so funny. Uh, my husband and I, I told you we did, we do shows, you know, so Friday we went to go set up the show. We do pipe and drape in a show at the convention center. So we set the show all up. We have employees helping us, but you know, it, we, we have to get up super early cause we got to drive our truck down there and unload it and everything. And, uh, we got up at five o'clock, got there at seven. So it was a little ways away from our home. And we got home, we got back home about 2.30. So that wasn't too bad. And uh, I had talked to the lady at the show and I decided that I would go, I would go sell at her show. I bring my, I bring my goods there to sell. It was a, a, be a ladies beauty and wellness show. So I thought I have jewelry and everything. I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and set up. She offered me a booth at a good price. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll set up. So I was coming home to get all my stuff together. And I was so tired. I was so tired. I don't know how these people are doing it on the campaign. That was just a few hours of work for me. I was exhausted. And I, my husband said, let's take a nap. And I said, no, no, no. I got to get my stuff already and packed. I wasn't prepared to do this. And now I need to get it all together. And he's like, no, let's just lay down for 30 minutes. It's 2.30. We'll start working at three and we'll get out of the house and, you know, we'll get, go back down there and I'll help you set your stuff up. And of course, twist my arm. I want to take a nap. So we laid down and took a nap. We didn't wake up till four o'clock. <laughs> we slept for one and a half hour. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I was like, what time is it? Oh my gosh. But we got back there at five o'clock. I had two hours to set up and uh, we got it set up. We did it. It was fine. So, hey, take some time to, you know, take a nap. If you need a nap, do it and take it. You'll feel so much better. Uh, hopefully you'll have a little help from somebody when you need it. <laughs> Ask and you shall receive, right? Anyway, it's just crazy, you know, crazy, crazy what's going on. And let's, and uh, Bernie Sanders, you know, even though he's older, he still has a lot of energy. It just feels like um, he pushes himself. I mean, he's one of those guys that overrides all the signals he's getting, right? Well, he was having a heart attack and he didn't, he, he was pushing through anyway. So whatever he's feeling, it's more important for him to be the president and get, be the nominee, you know, and to go on and, and be the president than it is for him to be healthy. He's trading his health for it because he's just ignoring whatever's going on with him. He'll just ignore it, which is not good, not good. But just think when he gets in the White House, he'll have all those physicians around him and he'll get all those checkups and they'll have him. I mean, 
when, when you're in that environment and you're, you know, you're the president, they really, really keep your health monitored. So that will be a good thing. Whoever becomes president, they'll get really good health care. And we know that they'll be taken really well taken care of, you know. And since he's had a heart attack too, I'm sure they're watching him a lot more closely. And I'm sure his wife's watching him a lot more closely too. My husband had a heart attack at 40 and, you know, oh, I know. I watch him really closely. Even even sometimes at night, I look at him and I'm like, are, are you, is he breathing? I look to see if his chest is falling up and down, you know? I'm like, is he breathing? Because usually I can hear him. If, I, if he's quiet, then I start watching him, you know? So I'm sure his wife is is doing everything that she can to make sure that he's taking his medicine, having good health care and, you know, doing what he should because he does push himself and I know he doesn't listen to himself at all. So you guys remember to do that and you girls take care of yourself. When your body's telling you something, listen to it, you know, listen to it, slow down, take a nap, do what you have to do. Okay, guys. I will, um, I'll do another reading very soon. Uh, if you have any questions or if there's somebody you want me to read on, just, you know, put it down in the comments and let me know and I'll answer your questions. I love to do that. If you'd like to get a reading with me, uh, just email me. My email's down below. The readings are still $25. It's a private YouTube reading and you can, like I said before, I'm going to say it again. You can either ask three questions or you can get a Celtic cross reading the three questions. You'll receive three cards on each question. So you'll get nine cards, the bottom of the deck. That's 10 Celtic cross. You get 11 and, and you, all of you will get an angel card to go with that too. So you'll get one extra card with that. And it's really nice. And of course I'll connect with your energy before that, you know, and I, I I get a lot of visions and things right before the reading and I'll just let you know what I'm seeing and what's going on. And there's a lot of guidance here. So I feel like mostly my readings are a lot of guidance and a lot of love. It's not, I'm not going to tell you, Oh, your friend's going to betray you and you're, you know, your, your wife's screwing your best friend. It's nothing like that. This is a lot of guidance with love. I always say I do very positive readings. They're very, very positive. No matter what's happening in your life, you have to, uh, you know, look at it in a positive way. There's a reason for everything. And the experience you're going through, it can be helped by looking at it in a different way. So it gives you a different perspective. There's a, like I said, there's a lot of guidance in each card and it helps you see things differently. Just a new perspective. Sometimes that is all you really need to change things around and change your energy and that'll bring more positive to you. So if you'd like to get a reading, just let me know, email me. Okay, guys, I love you so much. Thank you for all the comments. I appreciate them. You guys take care, take care, have a beautiful day. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.